Hello, I'm Sean Lokes, Technical Manager for the UK and Ireland for Turf and Landscape. Today we're going to be talking about um, Acelprin. It's a product we've had approved this year for use in lawn care. So it's a really exciting revolution and I'm going to talk you through the product and what we can expect from the label as well. And um, so to start the conversation, first about the damage cause, most of you working in lawn care will already be aware of this kind of damage, but just to say for leather jackets and chafers, they can cause really significant damage in, in turf situations. You can see there where the damage from the uh, chafers just chewing away at the roots just means that we're not getting that stability anymore. And so even just light play from kids playing football in the garden is, is really tearing up the turf. Um, it's something we can see really, really severely, whether it's leather jackets eating at roots or chafers eating at roots. Leather jackets will also come to the surface. It's not something we get such a problem with chafers, but both pests are significant problems. And secondary to this is secondary pest damage. So things like badgers and foxes coming and digging up the turf, looking for um, looking for grubs as well. So whilst the grubs might not be doing a significant amount of damage to the turf, it can be the secondary pests coming and digging them up. That's the real problem. If it's not um, loss of stability, you can also have problems in terms of obviously the pests are consuming roots. So that can lead to um, the plant not being able to take up nutrition in the same way, not being able to take up moisture in the same way. So the garden's just not going to respond in the same way to plant health inputs. So you might be putting it on a really good program, but it's just not responding in quite the same way because it's got those pests eating away at the resources of the plant. Um, so in terms of a seller in the product, it's applied as a spray application. Um, one of the really good features is it's, it's a low odor and with excellent compatibility. So it can be tank mixed with a lot of products and the approved rate is going to be 0 0.6 liters a hectare. So for a knapsack, that would work out as 12 mil in 10 liters of water. And that would do a 200 meter squared lawn. It's going to be available in two pack sizes. So 0 0.6 liters and three liter packs will be available. And it's going to be, it's approved only for professional use in lawn care. So amateurs won't be able to use it. You need to have your PA1 and your PA6 to be considered a professional user. In terms of how the product works, um, Acelprin is a ryanidine receptor modulator. So essentially it's going to be consumed by the pests. So we, we apply our acelprin and the pests then consume organic materials. So whether that be um, broken bits of grass that have got the product on them or in the organic matter that it's bound to in that thatch layer, they're consuming that and it's taken up and it makes its way to the muscle fibers and it binds with the receptors in the muscle fibers. And then basically calcium is leaking out of those muscle fibers. So it's just completely paralyzes those muscle cells. So they're just not able to function their muscles normally. An interesting thing about it is that other animals don't have the same kind of receptor modulators so they don't use them in the same way so that talks to us about our um, tox profile as well so it's really specific against these insect target pests in the way it acts so it's taken up goes to the target site calcium floods out the muscle cells and it just causes paralysis and that's the paralysis that that does what we need it to do and that's what we're going to speak about in a little while is why it's so important to target them at a certain stage because we're not killing them outright we're paralyzing the pest and that paralysis is what leads to death because they're not able to feed and not able to take on moisture. In terms of movement of the product, um, it is something that gradually moves into the organic matter layer. So it can take three to four weeks to reach its maximum concentration in that sort of top grub zone. So that sort of first five centimeters. And you can see there, we did some soil analysis work seeing that um, month after application, we still had 100% of the product in that trial in that top grub zone. So it's it's taking a while to move down to that layer, but once it's there, it's um, it's sticking around and it's giving us that level of protection. So we've got a really, really good level of products there two to three months later. So it's giving that sort of protective layer. We need the pests to come into that grub zone for us to target them. So we'll, we'll talk about soil moisture in a little bit, but it's important that we manage that. And if we've got a very dry situation, um, the pests are going to move down in the soil profile because they're not going to want to dry out and die. They're not going to get desiccate. So it's important that we keep surfaces moist after application so that we're able to keep the pests in that zone and we're going to get effectively target them. Now, pests can move down when it's dry and you can see they can move down very deeply. 
but all the stuff they want to eat, all the good stuff is in that top layer there. So they they do want to be there, but we need to give make sure there's adequate moisture so they so they can come and spend time there and consume the product. Um, in terms of specifics, uh, first I'll go into chafers. As we talked about with the mode of action, we know it affects the early stages the most. So we need to really target these first and second instars. So the very early stages of these grubs, and you can see the later stages, those third instars, by that time, they've fed on most of what they need to feed on. They're sort of getting ready for pupation, so they're not feeding so much. And this is a product we need the insects to consume. So we need to get them when they're early, they're consuming more, and they've also got less fat reserves. So when they're paralyzed, they're just not able to come out of that paralysis. Whereas those later instars, those later stages, like the very big one you can see on the screen at the end there, they're just going to have that fat reserve to be able to survive that application so we, we don't get as good a control on those third instars so it's about managing that expectations with the customer as well we'll talk about the different chafer species now but that's the the crux of it that we need to target these the very early first and second instar stages so if you've got the simplest of the major chafer species to deal with which is the, the garden chafer simplest because it's got this one year life cycle so we've got the adult flight um, which is when you would want to do an application. And then we can target effectively the first and second instars. And that all goes on throughout one year. And then the next, the same time, the next year, we get another flight. There's only ever one uh, cohort of grubs in the ground at any one time. So it's, it's a good one to get control with in, in just a year or quite quickly. With the other chafer species, which have got longer life cycles, you can see there the, the cock chafer and the wealth chafer up in, having up to three year life cycles. We do have to manage expectations because in year one, we can get good control of those first and second instars, but there'll always be those larger grubs that are in the soil that will be paralyzed, but they just won't be controlled to the same level. So we'll have to make sure it's a more programmed approach, which is making sure that the customer is aware of that, that if you've got the different species it's important to know that. It's also important to know your chafer species for timings. So we want to be applying a celeprin at peak flight of the different species. So it's really important to, to know that. So different species are going to fly at different times. You can see there the, the times that we approximate. We don't have as much data on chafer flights as we do for leather jacket flights. We've got really, really good um, data from the turf industry, but we'd, we'd like to have more data. So anyone who does see chafers flying it'd be really really good if you're able to log that on syngenta's pest tracker it's just on the syngenta turf website and there's a, a form there that you can just fill in just to say your postcode and which species you've seen it'd be really good to get more data for that that'd be that'd be great to have in terms of control we've got loads and loads of data on um, on chafer grubs they struggle with this in the us as well they have a lot of white grub problems so we've got lots and lots of data as you can see this is a summary of 99 field trials done in the us and with got really, really good levels of control there with the celebrant up to 90% control. And that's comparable with um, with active ingredients that were available in the past as well, which were considered considered industry standard as well. So they're not available in the UK anymore at a mid o'clock, but it, it was a good product for grub control. Um, so onto leather jackets, uh, crane fly. Again, this is another really, really big problem for the industry. And it starts with the same story. So we want to be applying it preventatively. We've only got one application per year. So we want to be applying it at those first and second instars. Now, the spring is potentially when you're going to see damage because it's when they'll start feeding and maybe turf growth hasn't started yet. So customers might complain that that's when they're seeing damage, but it's really important to move that conversation to getting the best level of control. You can you need to be applying it at peak flight, but also if you did apply it outside of that window, you're not going to get such good control because again, those third instars have got a lot more fat reserves. They're just not going to be feeding as much as well. So you're not going to get such good levels of control. So we're going to be targeting those first and next second instars, which is going to be after that peak flight. Um, generally with leather jackets, yeah, they are widespread over the UK. We tend to see them in areas with higher rainfall. Um, and they can support higher populations. But again, that's artificial because certain um, sites have more irrigation than they used to. So actually a drier area with good levels of irrigation can support a higher population level. So it's, it's something we'll be seeing in more areas as people have more, um, more advanced irrigation systems in their homes. They do tend to prefer moist and heavy soils and they like the presence of organic matter, again, more for them to feed on, but they don't have to have high levels of organic matter. As long as it's, it's moist, they'll be, they'll be quite happy there. And in terms of the leather jacket life cycle, there's lots of different species of crane fly, but the ones we're really interested in in the UK, this is the main life cycle we're looking at. 
So you can see there throughout the year, and the peak flight comes between August and sort of November, depending on where you are, depending on the start and the finish and the timing and the temperatures. Um, but we'd recommend an application towards the end of that peak flight. So we've seen the best results of an October application. So if you can get October, not later than October, but depending on the weather, you could go a little bit earlier. So late September into October, obviously it's difficult to, to fit in all the different customers you've got all at the same time, but that's going to be when you're going to see the best performance of product application for leather jacket control. And in terms of control, again, you can see really good levels of control there with the Celeprin and the untreated. They've got really high levels. So I think that's up to 40 grubs per meter squared and a mid um, historically available active, getting quite good levels of control, but the Celeprin pushing that right down to just two or three grubs found in a plot. So really good levels of control 70 days after application there. Um, so we'll go on to now the best practice and answer some questions as well. Um, so this is the lawn care seven point plan for application success. So it's kind of bringing in all the things we've talked about already. So first of all, obviously applying preventatively. So a celebrant is only effective on those first and second insars and the larger grubs just not going to be controlled. You're not going to get, it's not good value for money to be applying um, differently and we'll be going against the label as well. Um, secondly, Correct application timings, again, really, really important, that one. Um, so chafers applying at the peak flight of the target species. So that can be between May and August, depending on which species you're targeting. It's important to know that and get information on that where you can. Again, I know it's challenging with them. Um, if you're taking on a new lawn customer, you might not know the species, but really important to find that out where you can. And with leather jackets, mid to late October is really, really optimum application timing towards the end of that peak flight. Generally, sites with historic pressure will have an increased probability of reinfestation. So we've seen that sites generally that have had problems in the past are more likely to see it again. The chafers and the leather jackets are quite lazy flyers. They can potentially go a long way, but generally if they're happy in an area. They'll lay their eggs and they'll, they'll reproduce there again. So if you've had a problem before, chances are you'll have a problem again. Um, step three, pro uh, mo prior to application. So just making sure you've cut the turf before you apply so that the, this minimum amount of uh, things getting in the way of the product getting down to that soil layer. We want to be applying at 0 0.6 litres a hectare and five to 600 litres of water. And I've given it there as the knapsack uh, ratio as well. And we want to be using a low drift nozzle where possible. And we want to avoid application to lawns with flowering weeds. That's not going to be such a problem for leather jacket season because generally most of the flowering is done by then, but more challenging in the chafer period and consider a, a shroud for uh, around flower borders to avoid overspray onto those areas as well. Um, in terms of moisture, we talked about this already. So ensuring we get good soil moisture levels maintained before and after the application to ensure the target insects are near that surface area. So we need them to be consuming the product. If it's really dried out and desiccated and they're down deep, we're not going to get that contact we need while the product's still in a really good concentration in that top grub zone. So moisture is key for that and making sure, yeah, making sure we get that moisture. And finally, um, just returning clippings for the following three cuts. So a celebrin is something that's going to bind really readily to any organic matter. So if it's binding to the grass leaves, we don't want to cut and take that away. If we can cut and return those clippings, they're going to fall down through that canopy and the grubs are going to be consuming that active while it's bound to that organic matter. So they'll, they'll eat dead grass just how we would eat cut salad. It's Yeah, it's the same thing for them. Um, in terms of area of application, it's really, really good news for lawn care. Um, you guys have got 100% of residential lawns can be treated. So for other areas, so sports turfs and commercial lawns, so bowling greens, sports pitches, race courses, airfields and golf, they're all limited to 10% uh, area. So they have to calculate their area of application they'd like to do, and they're only allowed 10%. But for lawn care, it's it's 100% area. Just watching your lee wrap around water courses is the only consideration there for lawn care. And um, the label states dangerous to bees. So just making sure we, we highlight that. It's really important to follow the stewardship that's included on the label. And this is going to be true for, for any product that you're applying, just making sure we're doing the best measures possible so that we reduce any possible impact on bees and other pollinators. So to protect bees and pollinators, don't apply when uh, crop plants are in flower. So if there's flowering weeds, um, don't apply when bees are actively foraging. So a good way of avoiding that might be to apply in the early morning. 
and don't apply when flowering weeds are present in the lawn as well. So good stewardship practice for all application products. Um, are there likely any ill effects to children or pets? Um, well, all the work has been done to assess safety in humans, um, so that all the toxicity testing and toxicology testing and no concerns have been highlighted, but it's always best practice to keep off until the product has dried. So if you've got a homeowner that wants to be able to have children and pets go back out, just say once the product has dried on the leaf, it's it's fine to let um, to let people go back out there. And again, with animals, like we said, um, all the work's been done to assess the safety in animals and no con concerns have been highlighted. So whether that's dogs, cats, guinea pigs, rabbits, yeah, it's it's fine for those pets. Thank you very much for listening. That's been um, a fly through of Acelaprin. Hopefully there's been some information there, but there's always more information available on the Syngenta Turf website. We've got a uh, specialized lawn care page now to just highlight the specific information, including a question and answer section. Um, so thank you very much for listening. Um, see you again in the future.